Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Eat and Talk. Thank you for joining us today. Y'all, I'm so excited. <laughs> you heard her a few times mentioned in a couple different interviews, a lot of interviews, okay, because she's quite famous. Today we have my friend Rami, a.k.a. Miss Ramadan Designs. If you don't know, now you know. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. There's so much that we're going to talk about you guys today, but I'm most enthusiastic to really get into one of my favorite topics, fashion. Yes, let's okay. talk she, about it. She's the queen, and I'm not even talking about like modeling and stuff like that. She is the person that you see as like the mastermind, the creative director, the inspiration between or behind one of your or like a lot of your favorite looks, you know, from the modest fashion wear to the professional fashion wear to the arts to all of that. Yes. So, mashallah, thank, thank you for you. joining us. Thanks for having me. OK, Rami, let's just get into it. So tell me about how you discovered that this was your love. Um, geez, um, it's I think fashion always been in my life, I think, like most of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I think. I've always had the eye for it and I decided to venture and get the like a formal education for it also. Mm. It's funny how it all started. I went through a phase in life where I was like faith was very important. Yeah. Um, so before that I express using fashion just mainstream brands mm -hmm. but as I was transitioning into wearing the hijab um, I find it very difficult to incorporate some of the designs into it just to make it more modest mm -hmm. um, so I started paying attention to that first for myself I would re you know source things it's not like it was now that you have a lot of um, modest brands that were available but I also wanted to understand the industry and the best way to do that was to um go to fashion school yeah. um I've always studied art I loved art um so it's fashion is it's a means of communication it's it's also how you present yourself um also to just elevate things and you don't have to give up on fashion and being modest at the same time yeah. so I was one of the first hijabi to ever graduate from fashion school here from the art institute wow and it's and i hated that fact right like yeah. the fact i don't I, I shouldn't have to be the first one mm -hmm. but it wasn't by choice it just happened but um hopefully the first of many to come i hope so and that's hope why so. i think i champion there was one other um sister that was with me unfortunately she didn't finish the program mm -hmm. I think it's very new to our community also right like uh, we have managed to i think dominate the health industry whether it's the doctors and lawyers and nurses it's like an immigrant east yes. african i feel like it's all immigrants it's you all hear immigrant it. Mm -hmm. yeah and you can understand why those mm -hmm. jobs you can tra you, you can transfer anywhere mm -hmm. but i think the fashion industry um there isn't many of us and if they are it's it's not from um lots of east africans i yeah. think we've seen a lot more east african models in front of the camera mm -hmm. for decades we've dominated that industry yeah. it might not be a hijabi but you know mm -hmm. um but in terms of designers from east africa i can't even name one Wow. Back in the 2000s, if you yeah. remember now, there are quite a few smaller brands that are making noise in Europe. Mm -hmm. Even that, you don't hear much about us as much as you do uh, other African nations. You don't barely hear the creative side or the art scene for a lot of East Africans, like the Oromos and Somalis mm -hmm. is who I'm referring yeah, to. Yeah. Um, so I think there's definitely room for us and there's tons of creatives just we don't know about each other or we don't have the platform where we we can get to know each other so wow I yeah. didn't realize how I mean I know it's a very small industry within our community but I didn't Correct. realize how tight-knit it is that like you guys don't even have a platform to connect with no, one another none. wow it's, I I remember you know I've worked with every 
influencer model in town Mm -hmm. uh, for the good and bad. Mm -hmm. Um, But my mission was like, as I was getting the, I should say like the major fashion scene, they're paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. I made it my business that like, if a brand or a show was to include my brand, Mm -hmm. that 50%, if not 90% of my models are wearing hijab on purpose that was like my number one thing whether yeah. I work with a W hotel or MSB magazine to the variety page mm-hmm. um it was definitely a personal mission for me t- for them to see Muslim women in different eye and different lens mm-hmm. unfortunately there were many many things that were representing our communities and the other side yeah, on the variety page negative. if you know what I yeah. mean mm-hmm. and so I think I felt like we needed to dominate the variety page in the art and fashion scene. So the last, I would say, eight years, I've gotten pretty good coverage from the major, like the major uh, publication houses just representing Muslim women in different light. Was it challenging having to advocate to these larger publications like, hey, I want to represent Muslim women? No, not at all. I think um, Mel... You know, most of the time, if you know who you are and what you represent, when they approach you, um, they they know what to deal with. So usually if it's a show, I make it very clear and, and crystal clear what my, what I do, what I represent. So, no, I haven't had those talks except for when I was a student um, I did a show and the show was sponsored by a hair product. Mm. So they wanted to show the latest hair products. Mm. Um, and, you know, as many artists, I didn't want to be boxed in. So I do do the, I call it the haramis and the halalis. <laughs> um, so I do make products like my clothing that I do make are for for all women um it's not just a modest brand so i was able to just do hijab styles like the khalijis which is like half and half so i was able to negotiate down even to that level where you have a hair a hair product company Mm -hmm. that's sponsoring a show but i did not want to Missed that opportunity. Yeah. So believe it or not, that shoot ended up being the pick for the Minneapolis Fauché. Uh, Yes, this was back in 2016. Wow. Yes, I've been around the fashion scene for a while. You have for a very long time. Yes. Yes. So when did you graduate from fashion school? I finished fashion school back in 2017. Okay, 2017. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, like, even while it was in school, like, your first piece that you created that you were like, damn, I'm proud of this? You know, I've been designing for about 11 years now Mm -hmm. but I went and got a formal education can I wanted to understand the business aspect of business Mm -hmm. like of the fashion industry because originally I just wanted to open a boutique just like many of our sisters that have boutique and boutiques in town but what I realized um is was that the fashion industry there's just so many component to it so in order for me to make this dope abaya i would have to understand and understand how it's cut Mm -hmm. how it's made how it's patterned just and also having enough knowledge and education behind the scene so way before that i had an eye for style i've had an eye for particularly for um in, our, in my community, the Ormo community, I was already designing dresses. I wasn't making them myself, mm-hmm. but I was designing them for bridal wear. So I was well known in, in our town for styling and wow. things like that. Can we real quick like explain the difference between like styling and like making designing uh, what the terms are? Because I think by designing, you mean like you were sketching and like coming up with the, the blueprint. Correct. Okay. So, uh, no, I feel like Yusuf's trying to get me in trouble. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's how you define it. Yeah, the reason I'm saying that is because I think um, 
a lot of people use the word designing in a very loose way. Yeah. But when you do study fashion, it is not a very easy thing to become a designer. Mm -hmm. Um, There is, I don't think I, the reason I keep saying styling is because I knew what I wanted Mm -hmm. and how I wanted to lay down, but I didn't have the proper knowledge on how to Mm -hmm. so I would hire other people to bring my creative to life right that's what I was doing um where styling would be like you using an existing product Mm -hmm. that you could be purchasing from different stores and then you put a look together Mm -hmm. that makes you a stylist stylist. and then a designer would be from concept to uh you you have an idea to then it becomes, which is an idea, then it becomes a, like a one dimensional, which then you draw it. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes two dimensional by drawing it. And it becomes three dimensional when you're actually making the garment. Yeah. So that makes you a designer. And that is like very, like not as lucrative. Like that is a, like there's a science be- behind that. So Correct. It's not as easy. And I feel like that's what you, I mean, whether you decide to go to school or not, but I think that's what the school concept is for. Absolutely. That breaks it down. And I think, you know, I this is one advice I give it to all my young East African designers or anyone that like that's a a person of color that wants to pursue fashion Mm -hmm. is I would say study. I mean, you don't have to, Mm -hmm. but I think it will give you a perspective that and it will force you to really look deep Mm -hmm. and get inspiration because I think it also teaches you about design integrity Mm -hmm. and I think uh, you're very well aware of some of the issues we were having uh, of people just literally ripping you off of your designs and things like that and I feel like fashion school taught us the integrity yeah. You know, if you don't already don't have it in business and have not been to business school or want to understand in any field you want to get into, I would highly recommend you get the formal education because it just gives you uh, a depth of knowledge mm-hmm. that you could pull it at any time. Mm-hmm. And the fashion industry is huge, mm-hmm. right? You could be a buyer. You could, you know, if you don't want to own your own business or you could work for bigger companies as a buyer, as mm-hmm. trim seller, there's just so much f- into the fashion industry yeah. that you can be in in it yeah yeah and so what was your passion when you were taking that route within the fashion industry um one thing I you know I thought there was not a perspective from an East African woman to be Mm -hmm. honest Mm -hmm. and I I felt like I have a story to tell and using clothes and um you know many people are very talented in writing I tell a story and I think and this is just my opinion. You you can agree to it. I think most modest clothes is really made by men, um, not in co- like not thinking about the women. And I think um, a lot of the modest clothing is also coming from either like a in a Middle Eastern. Yeah. A Middle East, it's like around the Middle Eastern culture or the Middle Eastern body type. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that the weather was never in factor because I dare you to wear those polyester right. abayas in, in the winter. winter. Yes, <laughs> I know. So like, then I think that's when the idea of studying or understanding uh, fabrics comes comes in handy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so like, there's just so much that go into it making your clothes. Yeah. So like, I felt like we can add uh, modesty to it, but also understand fabric, um, it, its properties, what it can do for us, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Was there something that surprised you when you like actually got the formal knowledge where because you've always had an eye for fashion and you, you know, were already like head in. But like after school, you're like, wow, like this is something school taught me that I wouldn't have recognize one thing that i think fashion school had taught me was that there's no such a thing as original idea ah, you see okay everything you can think of it's already been done by someone else damn yeah really? so i remember i'll tell you a funny story and uh in one of my classes i like the teacher was like one of those professors that you can never impress mm. like this lady is a walking dictionary and um, 
I felt like I, I had to conquer her somehow. And I didn't get it, by the way, until about a year ago, just to let you know. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So like way after school. Way okay. after school. Um, so I, you know, we ate, breathed, lived fashion. Mm -hmm. That's all you did in fashion school. You competed, you drew, you painted, you studied, you, everything in fashion school slash art school. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day, wallahi, I dreamt about a silhouette mm -hmm. of a dress and i woke up and just sketched it mm -hmm. and made it uh, like literally made it mm -hmm. and i was like oh look what do you think i and i wrote about it and i put her on the mannequin ready for critique mm -hmm. and she was like oh that looks like Givenchy 1960 something <laughs> and i was like wait what i dreamt about this i drew it and mm -hmm. she's like yeah this this and guess what? She well, I have never seen that before. Yeah. But it's it's not even online. It was in one of those like we have like Museums a dictionary. Okay. No, they're books. Wow. They're books of all these. And she showed it to me. And I couldn't believe it. Same thing happened with my friend Victor that did the same thing, similar thing, where like silhouettes, every silhouette, everything you could think of, if you researched enough, someone already have done it. Right. Wow. But you but what makes it different is your take. Mm. Your take on it might be different. Mm. There's only one or maybe three different styles of abayas. Mm -hmm. But each season and every eight, you go and buy those abayas because someone thought about it different. The same silhouette, the same cut, mm -hmm. somebody's take. So mm -hmm. it's like it depends on your take. Mm -hmm. But most of things have already been done by somebody. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I would have never thought about that. That's yeah. insane. It's the truth. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately. Okay, so now you have to tell me though, like what, a year ago, how you ended up conquering her. So, like I said, it was very difficult. Like mm -hmm. she just, nothing impresses her. Mm -hmm. Like she's like, nah, nah, mm -hmm. right? And then I, my store is located in downtown St. Paul mm -hmm. in a Skyway. And she was taking her mother into one of the dental office and she saw it and it says Ramadan Designs. And she walked in, she said, you did it, kid. Oh. And I always knew you had it. And I was tough on you because I know you could do better. Oh, I would have cried. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so yeah. amazing. So, Those are the best professors. She was so hard. And mm -hmm. I appreciated her so much. There was no shortcut. Yeah. So she taught me so much. There's just so much to know about clothes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you? And so that's why whenever I see folks shopping at Shein or mm -hmm. all these crazy places, I mm -hmm. always ask, do you? Who made your clothes? Mm -hmm. Do you know how, how it's made? Okay, can we talk about that real quick? I'm yes. going to have to go into like the Shein part, <laughs> but let's talk about quality over quantity and why like we just, yeah, our intake about that. I think, you know, and this is when being a Muslim also comes in handy, you know, understanding what a wasteful it is. For those, for the audiences who don't really have, you know, that, that much of a knowledge in the garment industry, I would say look up a show, a movie called True Cost. True Cost. Yes. Okay. And I think right now I feel like the world is doing a better job in, in, in terms of like bringing the issue of sustainability. Mm -hmm. But I think as a Muslim, you have to understand and take responsibility on our consumption, mm -hmm. how much we consume. I think that... It's very important that we we purchase something quality so you can have it a long term. And I'm pretty sure that the things that you buy from Shein or or uh, Timu is the new one. Mm. It's like the clothes shrinks, right? Very cheap, um, yeah. Some of these products, especially when you're buying for kids, um, there are chemicals that goes into these products you straight up putting it on your babies. Um, we're also constantly putting these these clothes that are not regulated anymore mm -hmm. i mean some of these products don't even make it to europe but somehow it makes its way into united states and our community is consuming it in such a large number it's, it makes me very worried mm -hmm. i think there's just so many things other than like what you might read about i think it's so wasteful like mm -hmm. it shrinks like crazy 
Um, the quality is terrible. It you doesn't might... last at all. It doesn't last more than no. a handful of wears. And the second you get a dirty new wash, it, it's either torn, it is shrunk. Correct. Um, it's also like, you know, the sizes, I don't think fit our shapes because not, you can, it was not made for you. It wasn't made for you. No. Like you can, you can be a size medium and order an extra large and it still might not be the right Correct. fit. It can be painful. Like the waist will be too tight or the seams are like, it, it looks, it looks pretty modest, but like, it's actually not, it's like a V cut or something. So it's, it wastes, we think we're saving money, but it's such a waste of money. You're wasting so much. Yeah. And I think there are, um, sustainable companies you can shop right now. It's like, it's global. It's no longer local, Mm -hmm. but I think if you're able to find a local company that makes them here, Mm -hmm. you might pay extra 30, $40 more on products, Mm -hmm. but I think it's sustainable. It's more good quality products. I think there's so many brands that you can buy from, to be Mm -hmm. honest, but I think this level of consumption that I think we might need, we might, we might have to take a look at ourselves and see where we play in this. I mean, in terms of like wage, um, the huck of those individuals, mm-hmm. like the amount of abuse, the people who are making these clothes are ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's so sad. And especially like places like um, uh, Bangladesh mm-hmm. and majority of the, some of those people are Muslim. Yeah. You that's know, true. they're getting paid less than a penny. Yeah. Um, and they're making like twenty dollars a month. Yeah. And, and you're contributing so to work. it. Yeah. Whether you like to admit it or not, unfortunately you are. Um so not to say like every industry like Nike and these bigger brands are doing any better, mm-hmm. but at least it's livable wage mm-hmm. where these if you're buying a dress for ten dollars, there should be a question in your head and be like, How much did it take to make this clothes? Right. Mm-hmm. It's like they mark up up to 200 300 percent yeah what's a three 300 percent of ten dollars yeah so that's how much it took to make so i think it's it's we might have to start thinking like that in order for us to just 100 percent. yeah and i know like with vintage clothes so like for example oh my goodness um every time i go to virginia visit my grandma she has the same clothes and bags from the 80s and the 70s that well that's what i was going to say like keep me up cuz she my grandma is like really into like clothes and fashion and she's very that. particular about like the colors and like the palettes that she uses the quality of clothes yeah. like and she has stuff i kid you not from like when my mom was like 10 years old wow. and it's still the most perfect condition like her leathers beautiful her like wool scarves um she was really into like louis vuitton back then so she has a collection of louis vuitton i don't know what the like rate like rate and it feels as expensive as it is now but she has a collection but it's like perfect and i'm like wow i'm like who gets to inherit that yeah i know i know i was like oh my goodness and now i'm like oh my goodness like the stuff that are in the branded like stores, retail stores, local stores, and like Shein and whatever the other one was, Tifu or Timu. Timu. You know, it's just like, uh, if I were to even bring, if she ever like heard that I were to order from there, she would disown me, I think. I think, um, here, here's the question. If you're shopping those places, I think if, if you are a sentimental kind of a person, like there is nothing you're gonna pass down to anyone. Mm-hmm. Not like let alone your grandkids. I yeah. don't think you can pass it to your. T- I don't think we'll make it into your next birthday. Let mm-hmm. alone yeah. to generations. I think, um, if uh, this is a time when I get very geeked out. Mm-hmm. Um, so clothes were made different. So there were different kind of rules in the fashion industry back in the days. Um, the demographic also was very different back then. The food was different. Mm-hmm. Um, the waist measurement of a woman in 1970s, mm-hmm. it's like a waist of a 26, 25, which mm-hmm. is in a extra very small, tiny. small, Petite, yeah. correct. Mm-hmm. Um, but whenever clothes are made, well-made clothes, if you turn your clothes inside out, mm-hmm. They should be about an inch to two inch on each side of the seam, Mm. which means 
about that will give you about four inches that's about like 20 pounds mm, so yeah. you should be able to alter those dresses that's why when you go to vintage stores and you find a dress on the side seams there's a huge gap is so that you can meet you can let things out if it's too tight mm -hmm. or let loose but if you i dare you to go any of these stores nowadays you turn a dress inside out or mm -hmm. a top mm -hmm. it's surged edge to edge there's no room for you to let out yeah you understand that's true. that means it's cheap mm -hmm. it was made very quickly yeah even in these bridal gowns it's very disappointing mm -hmm. or even ev event um, like evening event gowns and gowns, things like yeah. that but typically well-made clothes will have those room for you so you can fluctuate mm -hmm. um Another thing is also the quality of the material. So like um, back in the days that you, like you said, wool scarf, that's mm -hmm. a natural fabric. Cotton, that's a natural fabric. Now everything you see is polyester. Yeah. Um, so meaning polyester is made out of, with oil. Uh, petroleum is what it's made out of. Really? I didn't yes. even know that. Yes. Okay. So like... Um, then you have natural fabrics, but then petroleum is used to mimic natural fabrics. Mm. So your polyester, spandex, well, it's like super stretchy. You have silk. Then now there's satin. There's mm -hmm. like silk satin, mm -hmm. which is silk because, mm -hmm. as you know, it's made out of silk warm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wool is made out of like from uh, sheep, sheep yep, yep and alpaca and so on and so forth mm -hmm. now there is a um a way for you to use bamboo there's um uh, there's like tents correct yeah. but there's tensile which in like wood poop mm -hmm. like when you shave a wood mm -hmm. those leftovers mm -hmm. which is a tree mm -hmm. could turn into a fabric actually a very soft fabric wow. um but polyester is literally petroleum mm -hmm. it's made out of oil and so I feel like that it makes my skin itch. Correct. Unfortunately, okay. you have more people paying an arm and a leg for clothing that's made out of wow. polyester versus silk, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's why some of the good brands charge you is because they're using natural fabric and not and those fabrics are becoming more expensive. Mm -hmm. It's because people are relying on cheaper products mm -hmm. like polyester. Mm -hmm. So it's like where cotton like when we were argentino mm -hmm. and our, you know our traditional and stuff yeah yeah that has more it's more of like poly mm -hmm. also okay. but then back in the days they were made with silk yeah. or um and cotton but like mm -hmm. the guntinos that like our guntina, our yeah. ancestors wore right mm -hmm. you guys say guntino we mm -hmm. say guntina mm -hmm. or like the white cotton ones that women wear we mm -hmm. call it sedata mm -hmm. those things are uh like in oromia region we have seven um, we have 11 region they mm -hmm. all make clothes differently mm -hmm. all natural fabric or it's hand woven mm -hmm. but you don't understand the how good those things are for your skin but yeah. now we're relying heavy on polyester. Oh. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, there's I just read an article a couple of weeks ago about the impact of the athleisure wear, mm -hmm. like the yoga pants. You're into health and fitness, but you're not realizing what you're wearing is made out of also no, some chemicals not, that's not good for you. Us. Like I'm over here like these Correct. yoga pants are cute. I'm about to get my little workout in. And it's like that's all, it's and you're sweating in the oil. Oh. And there, the so many things are crossing my mind right now. They're adding so much chemical, and it's they're, they're they're making it anti weaking property, which means good for your like it won't smell. So things can all of those properties are added to the fabric using polyester and which then is touching your skin um so that's why if you notice most baby clothes because their skin is so sensitive it's all 100 percent cotton it's because it's breathable mm -hmm. um but yeah those are actually the studies that the fashion industry is doing right now is really wow. the impact of of so much polyester in our But are generation. they really like, I mean, how far can they're we get with that? They're not going to kill you. I was gonna say, no, they're not going to kill us. But what you I'm saying depend is on it. now that I'm like educated on it, just like imagine if everybody was educated on it and everybody stopped buying polyester. Would the 
industry or whoever's in control of all of this, would they allow that? I mean, the more they're throwing these like shiny things in front of you, Mm -hmm. the more you're not going to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But I think one advice would be let's wear less polyester and more natural fabric. So even for you, Yusra, Mm -hmm. like whenever you're buying clothes, please do me a favor. Turn the the like this by law Mm -hmm. they have to write what these products are made Mm -hmm. out of so look at the labels okay and like even this is a challenge for everybody to look at the label in the back of your clothes and see what percentage of your clothes contains cotton or any of natural fabric Mm -hmm. right yeah um or what percent of them is like is polyester Wow. Or is it a mixture? And I have very sensitive skin. Like I had eczema when I was like born, like as a baby. So there was so many things that like my skin. Yeah. Re- and like even till today, like my skin reacts to so many different things. So there's only certain makeup products and like skincare and, and, and even like clothes that I can wear. Yeah. I think yeah. it's it's important to pay attention to like mm-hmm. what your clothes is made. I think people should pay attention to who's making your clothes. Where is your clothes coming from? And what is my clothes made out of? Those are so three I think like, important questions. <laughs> very important. Okay. Seriously. Wow. I never yeah. thought about that. See, this is why it's so good to talk to you because now <laughs> I'm going to like go home and strip and be like looking at everything. It'd be tag. interesting. Yeah. yeah. I remember like I, I go to whenever I'm in New York, I go to the different showrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, showrooms are where um, a lot of upcoming designers and things like that where they will give these what they're thinking of, what their creation is. Mm-hmm. And it's it's very entertaining to me to go to like a big luxury stores and like they have the eight hundred and six hundred dollar on t shirts and then you turn the t shirt around and you be like, Psst, I'm not paying because your name is on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks cool. You might notice it. But and when you look at the fabric and I'm like jokes on you, whoever is buying it. But I think right now there is um a huge push of like quiet luxury, mm-hmm. which means there are brands literally being born in LA and, and New York and those area. Unfortunately, they keep they're marketing it to the one percent, mm-hmm. but the t-shirts and the, the clothing are made so well. Um, you know, I think one one affordable company that pays attention to the things like that was um American American Apparel. Okay. I think they make the best basics. Is that Chloe's brand? No. No. No, it's an older brand that's been around. Like the denim brand? They they have denim. They okay. also have a lot of t-shirt. Okay. Um, like a lot of the bodysuits and things like that. They're cotton. They're like cause things that you wear under. Mm-hmm. But uh oh, denim. Denim is a good one. Yeah. Um a denim is it's a it's a type of fabric mm-hmm. that is made out of cotton. Mm-hmm. It, that was actually that um creativity or ingenuity behind this is actually an american brand wow. but except now the best brand is made in japan not in the united states that's a different story oh, wow. but yeah denim is another one it's made out of mm-hmm. um cotton so it's it's quite breathable and it's very strong you can have it for a long time so investing money on on like one pair of jeans that has good quality versus yeah. all these stretchy ones that has so much chemical to it yeah. that will last you a long time. I have some Levi's still from high school. Correct. Like that's from high school. Levi was one of the company. That's the company that started the denim. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It lasts. <laughs> and now I remember I was at a store. I think I was at Urban Outfitters and I looked at some Levi jeans and they're like so expensive. Correct. Compared but, to like what it was when I was in high school. Correct. But imagine those pair of pants. Like I'll stay. This is this is warning and this is this is uh, SOS to all my hijabis who wear jeans. Yeah. You need to stack up on all the wide leg pants as they're in style, right? I <laughs> right know. Because you'll have it forever. Yeah. Right? For us, like yeah. wide legged pants. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, she's like, them. oh my gosh. She's like, I'm so glad you guys have the, like, this is back in. She was like, Correct. I remember back in the day, she was like, this is what we wore. It yeah. went away. She's like, I hate the skinny jeans. But she was like, I'm glad you guys are back into the wide leg <laughs> pants. <laughs> yeah. It's a pendulum uh, swing, right? Like, eventually, um, we recycle back to the old fashion i'm noticing that yeah, so just like with back. a lot of different brands too like champions new balances for sure like those new balances all... been back yeah i don't know why i don't people slept on it no I they slept on it so yeah. well but it was like 20 dollars at like you know the retail stores for a quite some time like yeah. after it fell off after like the late 2000s yeah uh, and now it's back to like it's listen air force like, one is back not the black ones yeah um 
that I yeah, think... Yeah, Air Forces are very popular. Not again. the black ones. I yeah, no, like. not the black ones. No, not the black ones. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but all of that is like getting... Back. So um, yeah. it's vintage yes. in a way. Yeah, because The quality is amazing. Ding, 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 ding. And yeah. I think there's so many black creatives behind those brands mm -hmm. that there's a reason why they're coming back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's been really... That's been really cool I and love popular. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So speaking of black creatives, we talked a little bit about this off camera, but we, I wanted to talk about like people of color in this industry, especially like women of color, East African women. Um, do you think that they deal with imposter syndrome? God, I think all black women in yeah. general. I know I do. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. I, I suffer from that mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I think it has a lot to do with our culture. Um, and I think it's also, I feel like society has set up such a different rule for black women. But I think we are, especially like, I can speak for some of East African women. I feel like we're a walking political statement and we are yeah. everything um, other communities think of like mm -hmm. we're we're black women we're immigrant we are muslim mm -hmm. it's like you, we have the and then the you have worlds. hijab on top yeah. of it it's like you can't hide none of that mm -hmm. right like you you're wearing a hijab you're a black woman and then you are an immigrant because once in a while this the accent does come it out does, here and there <laughs> or like a personality trait or something. <laughs> something. Yeah. And so I think, um, I think those in combination of all those sometimes does create this imposter syndrome. I, we just had fashionopolis. I don't know if you know what fashionopolis I've is. I've heard of it. Uh, fashionopolis is a this, this year's the eighth year it's held it's a big fashion event hosted by minneapolis temple magazine mm -hmm. and i've been with them for the last five years and wow. i should tell you how i got there yeah please Funny do story um as you know like most things are not handed to us right and so 2019 i produced my own fashion show it's, it was titled warm winter night and fin fin May. so wow. fin fin May is at the city i was born in amoromo so it's like the capital city and it was inspired by our market it's called mercato and there's one particular area that used to be my favorite which was like the spice market mm -hmm. what they have all the barbares and you know what shiro is mm -hmm. and they would have these just it's a all you see is colorful powder mm -hmm. and so that was really and i was inspired by that so i had lots of mustard and i thought about a girl uh getting ready and it was like her her like wedding week mm -hmm. so kind of like chunky sweaters and silk mm -hmm. silk pants silk skirt and I had a finale dress of this just huge, huge ball gown. And I wanted to invite the who's of fashion scene. And so I heard the editor of um, MSP magazine and her name is Natalie, mm -hmm. um, Madeline, I'm sorry. It was Madeline. Um, I looked her up and I was like, great. And I made this invitation card where I had like those Kenyan bracelet, like Cute. the hand beaded. Yeah. And I made this really pretty invitation box. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not mailing this. I'm going to go hand deliver it. Mm -hmm. I know. I did not make an appointment. I will start knocking doors. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Like home doors? Nope. They're offices. Business? Okay. Okay. So when I got there at MSB Magazine, the lady's like, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm here to see Madeline. She's like, she's not here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. When is she here? She, Yeah. And she goes, she's on vacation. And mm -hmm. I was like, where else, where else can I see? She's mm -hmm. like, oh, hang on. Let me see if Jane is there. I'm like, I'm thinking that's Jane is her coworker. Mm -hmm. I'm like, great. I'll, I'll see Jane. And so she's like, Jane would like to see you. And then Jane's like, oh, hi, I'm Jane. I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm Rami. I have a show. She was like, no, no, just come on in. And so she gets me in her, this really, really fancy, uh, like, like a meeting room, mm -hmm. conference room. And she's like, tell me about yourself. And I just went on and on and on. I just graduated from fashion school two years ago. And I'm putting on my, my very, 
her show. I've been part of Minnesota Fashion Week for the last two years. I'm finally hosting my own show and I want you to come. She's like, and what do you do? She goes, I'm the editor in chief. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so uh that's when i guess like she um years later told me she thought that was the most like refreshing thing she has seen a long time oh, yeah. and i've been in relationship with them i've been featured in their magazine several mm -hmm. times they crowned me the one to watch oh, and oh, my yeah. dress um in 2022 i got dress wedding dress of the year oh, my with gosh. minnesota bridal that's huge. Huge, uh, yeah. Oh it was really goodness. a big, yeah, it was a big oh, Okay, you have to send me that because I want to see how that dress looks. That's her, yeah. Not, yeah, I'll show it to you. Yeah. Um, Sarah Edwards, when yeah. she got married, I that's her dress. That's wow. the dress I made. And, um, and then now then In Style magazine mm -hmm. and um, Greece published me. So that was also a big deal for that's me. That's huge. Huge deal. Yeah. Um, got like four page spread, which was really, really cool. Oh my so, goodness. you know, it's like it's definitely like a pinching moment. But, yeah, I think we have to advocate for ourselves and our, our designs. And I made a mission. Um, if you can't hire me mm -hmm. in a fashion industry, you're going to notice me. So mm, I was doing every right. single show. I want every single competition. Mm -hmm. Any fashion competition that happened 2015 and 2016, mm -hmm. I won all of them. You dominated oh my that. God, yeah. yeah. I was out for vengeance. I and it. I think it's because they don't see us coming. Um, they don't even see us sometimes. I've gotten mistaken for like a parking attendant, you name it. Stop. <laughs> well, like, oh my yeah, God. It's, it's, it's really bad out. Especially when they don't expect you to oh, be I there. I, I can relate, but I just didn't know it would be the same even in your world. Oh, it's even worse. I felt like they yeah. really don't. There's barely any of us, yeah, right? Is. Like That's I true. think in the health sector, I think there is a bit of representation. Mm -hmm. There's none. I remember I was the first one to show at Minnesota Fashion Week. I was the first one, you know, and I even like Minneapolis St. Paul magazine. They're just been so great and working mm -hmm. with me. I, I remember their guy that puts their show to his name is Grant Whitaker. And we became a really good friend. He's, he was, he's one of the few people that saw my potential mm -hmm. earlier on. So when I invited them to that show, he's like, hey, I really like these dresses. We want to feature them at Fashionopolis. Mm -hmm. So the first year I attended is because my dresses were in their show. Mm -hmm. Second year, they asked me. The third year was COVID. So I had a dress dedicated to Brianna Taylor because mm -hmm. everybody was, don't get me wrong, everybody was into the George Floyd case. And yeah. I felt like Brianna, Brianna was completely was around that ignored, time and it was she did not get the voices. No, that she, that no, she deserved. not not the anger. Yeah, um, as in, as you know, we weren't as angry for mm -hmm. her, but I think as a woman, I felt it yes. right, and so I I dedicated a dress to her. So Minneapolis St. Paul magazine was not afraid of that; they were okay. actually championed that. So I think. You know, that made me look at them a different way. Shout out to them. They were the yes. first, like, um, magazine and publication. Also, I was, I think it was 2021 or 2022, like, woman in business honoree. Yeah. And that was the first time I discovered them. And I, I like, fell in love with Listen, them. So shout out they, to them. Yeah, they do some uh, an amazing work. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I've been with them. So last Friday was Fashionopolis and it was at the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. And I was showing. Mm -hmm. Not only that. I when I when we first did a show in 2022 I usually just use any of the Adan girls and I put hijab on them yeah. but I finally found a model that like has you know some it's unfortunate but sometimes like you have to look for um a model that also has the abad you yeah. know that 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 would behave very well yeah. and that will represent most of us and i think my model zahra does that mm -hmm. she has just such a beautiful personality and has so much respect for her faith mm -hmm. um that I advocated and said, hey, I think you need to have her in her show because she's going to be part of my show. Mm -hmm. But you really need to give her an opportunity. Alhamdulillah, it's her fourth year. And this year she opened 
Fashionopolis at the Four Seasons at that. Five, it was 600 people watching her, did every single look, killed it, represented our community. So shout out to Zahra. Out to her. But it's yeah, amazing. so it's been, wallahi, it's, it's been rewarding seeing someone you advocate for. Yeah. I'm happy because I felt like some of my like things that I wanted to do was like put our girls in these in these spaces mm -hmm. at least when I'm there they will be there mm -hmm. but she did beyond my expectations yeah. she's like thriving and I'm just so happy like oh. I was part of her journey yeah yeah she's so all beautiful. over my page if you go on my okay, Instagram page I love yeah that. that's so beautiful yeah. I also remember you speaking of also you know East African and health you were in collaboration of a health piece, right? C correct. Yes. Um, so, yes, I, um, alhamdulillah, it's been a, um, a great opportunity, I think, when the owners of Mawadda, uh, they were known as Haya. Mm -hmm. Then before 2020, they came up to me with an idea wanting to do disposable hijabs. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the design, the designer behind that. Mm -hmm. um, they had an idea. And so I was able to help them um, design those hijabs, find a manufacturer, make the pattern, make the product. Wow. So I am the the designer behind those those yeah. disposable hijabs. And then just uh, about like a month ago, mm -hmm. we actually premiered our, it's in a collaboration. So it's Mawadda and Ramadan Designs. Mm -hmm. We are launching a scrub line for Muslims. Wow. So every single piece was actually, oh, well, I sent you an article that got, we just got featured on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we were able to make modest uh, scrub line for Muslim women around the world, um, but designed by by a woman, uh, a hijabi. That's so. That's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. We make things for ourselves so we understand what it is, right? Mm -hmm. There are some modest um, scrub line out there, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're designed for our community necessarily. Yeah. Dumb hip measurements, girl. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so yeah. I, we were. I was able to make the samples here in in St. Paul. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Shout out to St. Paul. No, um, we always like debate about that. But you know what? I'm going to give St. Paul its respect because we have amazing you. people like you. Yes, we do. Yes. yes. Uh, please remember it's also your capital city. True. Okay, good. I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, alhamdulillah. So we, we were able to um, work together um, and then happy just that I get to collaborate with them in this project. Yeah. And it's like, it's so cool because like you're bringing together like the two worlds Correct. of like health and fashion. Correct. And then also modesty and saving lives. Correct. And we, I feel like, well, I mean, I'm not in the health industry, but I can only imagine, I mean, with all of the Muslim women that are in the health industry, yes. how much they struggle yeah. to like, have you know keeping up being aligned with their faith Correct. and doing their work Correct. you know yeah so and it's like i think again and i can't stress enough like if any of you audience member i think if you're interested in anything that you do i think getting a formal education because i do see some brands and some like making just some rookie mistakes just because they just don't have like fabric knowledge yeah. or um but I, I I say going to school and getting a formal education and understanding what your capability so you could deliver to your best. Yeah, I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. And I think that the importance of supporting one another, especially as East Africans, um, just because the struggles we go through is like identical. So, identical. so it's, it's better if we do it as a community. I feel like we'll go further. Do you feel like we aren't doing that right now? Is there something we can do better? Oh my God, there's always room for improvement. And I felt like, um, I think it's in every community to be honest, yeah. but I think, I feel like we can do better. Mm -hmm. I think there's always a, a better way of doing things. I feel like it's constant. I feel like there's room for everyone. Absolutely. Um, that's what I honestly believe. We is never like, want to be the only ones or the no. first. By the like, way, it's please. lonely as hell. It, that's I was going to say. Like, <laughs> did you feel alone sometimes? Or was yes. there times where you were like, damn, I wish there was someone 
like me that I can talk to about this that I can relate I wish. with. I honestly do. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think even there's some like random networking events I get to see you. I'm pretty sure you'd be like, why is this girl so excited to see me? Because like I am, because literally. She is, but I decided because you love me so much. <laughs> no, see, that too. But I just feel like there's not enough of us in these places. And I feel like to me, it's even if we're in a jokes or something so we can connect easily, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think we should be, we should support one another. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just everyone for everybody. You're right. Yeah. 100%. There's, well, hey, there's just like, alhamdulillah, yeah. so much opportunity. And I feel like we could just, I'm sure there are things that you could probably help me in my business and vice versa. Yeah. And I always say like, everybody needs an, a styling advice. Yeah. Oh, I, I learned so much from you. <laughs> Polyester out the door, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like I learned that so much. Be, uh, everybody's like, oh, nice hijab. I'm like, yeah, it's silk. Yeah. They're like, really? I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah. Do yeah. I look like a girl that wears polyester? I know, period. <laughs> Let them know, honestly. And That's also, like, I, I've seen your designs for abayas, and they're so unique. Thank you. Mashallah. I know. I think everybody's like, oh, well, how come we never heard of you? And I think there are tons of things that have strength in. Mm -hmm. Another thing, I, some areas I do not have the strength, which is, like, the ability to use social media and advertise yourself, mm -hmm. right? And, like, I was one of the few people I'm talking about 2014, 13. I used to there. I used to take the Hindi dagan, the Somali fabrics, mm -hmm. and make them into these gowns. Wow. Unfortunately, some of these girls are hijabi, so I can't release them. I can show you. Yeah. But there's so many things I've done using. And now art. everyone's Every, doing it. Yes, but I'm like, uh, you're like six years too late. But Period. we were able to use them because, you know, when I was telling you earlier, I used to personally used to get so so irritated mm -hmm. and feel some type of way when I used to see our brides wearing either other people culture if you know what culture I I'm talking exactly about I don't want to spell it out mm -hmm. and I'm like we have a guntina we have our traditional fabrics we have our own culture mm -hmm. the one day that Ilahi said you know it's our day of the nikah or the day of the wedding you chose to wear other people's culture that mm -hmm. used to bug me mm -hmm. that's why i used to design a lot of the oromo traditional dresses mm -hmm. and i was able to design in different aspects using our own culture mm -hmm. so important to me mm -hmm. some of my somali friends when they got married mm -hmm. i was I, i'll show you some pictures yeah. like i was we're making mermaid dresses using the, sh the shash mm -hmm. Like back then, oh, they didn't wow. even have the shash in a big yeah. fabric. So what I used to do is we used to buy the Keep shash, the shashes, yeah. literally connect them mm -hmm. and make a train out of those. Wow. Oh, I've made, I'll show you some of them. Okay. Especially, so what I'm is you're going to make my future wedding dresses. Of course. Dresses. Where else are you going to okay, go? Period. The Hindi dakan, like yes. the Guntino materials. Yeah. I've made so many dresses with those. Yeah. I've made abayas with them. Actually, a fashion show that I did back in 2016, I made them out of the the Hindi Dagan fabric, which oh we call goodness. it we call it banadiri. Okay. Yeah, the boranas yeah. Uh, of the Oromos wear that. Yeah. So I was able to make using traditional things into modern things. So that's so fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna need that pronto. Absolutely. Okay, I love that. So I think it's like yeah, like you said, like there my strength is in social media or advertising, but I've done so many just cool projects that are coming so my much way. Of, and it's true. Like, she doesn't post much on social media. What am I supposed to do? But Create your work the speaks for itself, though. <laughs> well, and you can, some people, you can't just do two at one time. That's, that's what but I, maybe you need, a, like, a social media manager. Because your correct. stuff I agree. is just phenomenal. I don't have... I can't be doing the fitting. Yeah. Because I make my stuff, yeah. right? Like, I'm in my studio. If you yeah, ever come to my studio. Yeah. So I, I pattern them. I mm -hmm. cut them. I sew them. I do the fitting. I do oh. all the beadwork I do everything so yeah. even when I make my abayas they're like why do you only make 20 mm -hmm. uh like because I'm making them from scratch and from scratch yeah. I sketch them it's and then factory. so like my abayas get sold out in two hours oh I know they do because I remember last but, you dropped your abayas <laughs> I went back the next day you were sold out I it said sold I didn't out. even get a chance so. <laughs> well the idea you know what um everybody's like why don't you go to China and make a bunch of them I say I agree I think there's a lot of um brands just doing that mm -hmm. kudos to them mm -hmm. but i think it's like 
my girls get to be the only one. Yeah, I love the limit. And I then like I feeling just, it's very limited. limited. Yeah, it's a I drop. Like that. It's a, it's a, I do a Ramadan. By the way, I do Ramadan drops. Okay. So uh, what I've done in the past is like I have these uh, Ramadan outfits. Mm -hmm. and they're prayer outfits. Mm -hmm. But it has a QR code. Mm -hmm. So if you scan them, it will take you. It's a dua for the 30 days. Oh. So even those are li very limited. Oh my god! Yes, I love that. Okay, yeah. I'm so gonna this be Ramadan, on it this you gotta Ramadan. be on the list. Yeah. So it's it's limited. It's limited edition. It's limited available made, and it's like you know cruelty free because it's just me sewing. It. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really it's cruelty free? It's just cruelty to you. <laughs> it's it's made with passion. I literally. love that. It's made with love. Yes. And so that's pre Ramadan, so yeah. and then I do the Eid collection like two weeks before I drop them usually on Instagram or my Snapchat. And then they get claimed in 2.2 seconds. And the next day people come pick them up and it's done. Oh, I know. I was so salty. I got to you. I saw like a really cute, it was like pink one and it looked like a very thicker material. It is. So my abayas are based on what season we're in in Minnesota. Okay. Um, and then also it depends on, so I do a fabric shopping every year. Mm -hmm. And I go to New York. Mm. Um, so that's where I research some of my good fabrics. Mm -hmm. and so for AIDS, like for, for AIDS 2025, I already have the samples. Mm -hmm. So then by the time it rolls around, we only make, like I said, each color is just one of one. Wow. Yeah. So whichever is like, yes, that was the Hunt Tooth, Hunt's Tooth abayas that i made yeah because since you know me i can i can save you i can make you one yes no please because i remember i was like this looks so unique i need one yes i was like okay i'll call it ali let me wait till friday did i go Girl. back it was like two days later or i think it was literally the next day i went on your story and you're like sold, sold out sold I said, out yeah dang yeah oh. we made 20 abayas um and then what i do is i kind of make them to 62 mm -hmm. all of them and then you come and i just stitch it to like we'll, we'll custom it to customer. size yeah based That's on so, you the whole process is so special yeah literally it's like literally you'll be the only one because I, I remember going to eight prayers and one time there was this like girl this this girl we knew that used to be at 24 mall and she's like exclusive abayas i was in fashion school then mm -hmm. she's like exclusive abayas she's like i only made 10 mm -hmm. or something like that and i'm like great the colors were beautiful I'm like great i bought it i was the 54 girl she's like well i said she said she made 54 56 58 16 62 and that's it wow tell me why half of the eight prayer girls were wearing that oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness after that yeah. day i was like we look like a uniform yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not doing that again. Yeah. Otherwise, just wear your classic black abaya. To be honest, it's. I was gonna say let's bring back the classic black abaya. No, you're absolutely right. I stopped going to. I mean, I love supporting small business in my you community. Have to. You have to. And I'll go for a lot of other things, but it's harder for me to shop at some of our cultural malls because I'm like, dang, when a season or a trend is in, everyone you have to wait brings it. the Correct. same exact style. In yeah, I, like colors. I think that's the only thing I wish like our community can help. And I again, like going back to understanding the business of what you do, one of the biggest no-no in the clothing industry is over inventory. Mm -hmm. If you have to, you feel like your business needs a warehouse mm -hmm. or a storage room because of unsold products, ding, 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 you have problems. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's true. And you, what are you going to do with those stuff? I was going to say, what do they do with it? I have this? no idea. Give it away or like. I know I one know. of the Adairs that I buy hijab from. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Adair, remember the one hijab? He's like, you're the only one that buys that. So it's in my storage. And yes. I remember him showing me and I'm like, Adair, what's all that? He said, oh, the stuff that never sold. I was like, what are you going to do with them? He's like, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I so think I wonder what's that, is that. Is that a common thing? It if is it is, a, it's a problem. It is a problem. Yeah. It is a common thing because mm -hmm. when I go to... That's money. That's just sitting on. It is. When I go to the cultural malls, it's very true. Um, A lot of the new tenants, when they move in, they move in with a bunch of different... Inventory. Kabasas, hijabs. Exactly. All the inventory. And uh, I come back like a year later and some of that stuff might still be sitting there, like just there, but they just added piles of other new stuff or they went and put it in a storage and i'm like yeah that's a problem it's a waste i'm curious like what happens to this this will be a fun project for me anyways but yeah, yeah it's, it's very case study. It, 
yeah. it's very interesting. I it's funny you said a case study. I was just doing one on this Adan brand that just blew up but all of a sudden I'm like I gotta do a case study mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. um but just understanding but yeah I think like the overhead of carrying a store like being even at Carmel it's very expensive for those IAOs and the habos that, that work there mm -hmm. I always wonder what system they use to protect themselves for like the inventory control I don't aspect think of it. I have a system as of right now. Yeah. But let me know if I'm wrong, if you're a Carmel. Yeah, I, I'm owner. really, yeah. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, how the inventory yeah. side works. Yeah, Because that, that controls your business. It does. Yeah. Um. Okay, real quick, like, one last thing before I, like, wrap no. it up. Um. Because we talked a lot about how you're behind the scenes. But yes. off camera, we also talked about you were on the face of... For a very long time oh of a certain like <laughs> company and uh, billboards so can we talk oh about that because you were modeling too for a bit uh, you know yes so, so i was one of the first hijabis to do the target ads like in-store ads and wallahi well, don't ask me how i got there <laughs> not as you know i'm very tall yeah um <laughs> sarcasm I, you can see her. <laughs> fight for nothing yeah. i'm a fun size um yeah, fun yeah size. wallahi it was just one of i remember telling my sisters and they were just laughing um but my sisters have been so supportive in every crazy things that i do mm -hmm. and my sister was like, why not? Just, I'm like, I don't know. This guy told me to come to to test out. Mm -hmm. She's like, go, why not? And like, I love her for that. And mm -hmm. so I went and there were just models full of it. And somehow I made it. So I did like a Target ad mm -hmm. for their camera and, and like, um, I think it's like a electronic area. Mm -hmm. I was like pretending to be a mom with a camera with a hijab. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the best experience. And then my, the most pinch me moment was when the Minneapolis um, um, like luxury car asked me to do an ad also for Fashion Week. Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah, it was really cool. I think it was so cool. Um, it was the the jaguar mm -hmm. like they, they have it like a huge so Fancy. yes okay. yes so i think it was really cool i get to do like uh cars like that and i design a whole dress around based on one of their cars so it's really really cool. a porsche so imagine like it was a silver porsche oh minneapolis porsche chose my designs and then i design a dress yeah. based on a car mm -hmm. and i was like did a little ad with adrian yeah. <laughs> um so that was super fun and then you know like like i said like different opportunities come and i it's like a pinch me moment and i also got a chance to work with houston white um it's really a dear friend and i had a couple of chance to do some of like styling work for his brand as you know he's at target mm -hmm. and the first black man to have that deal with target mm -hmm. and he's from our city right like i think understanding and highlighting and celebrating brands that are from our city um but then be just being a, a hijabi behind the scene is was really it was I like a, a pinch me moment mm -hmm. i think it's like with these kind of opportunity just come my way it's like sometimes it's it's like it's so surreal it's cool and then i did two uh beauty campaigns with uh, lip steam. So okay. I was like all over her marketing at like I think I remember sat, seeing the that. Sat state fair. Yeah. Yeah. And now yeah. we're in um, the Mississippi market with her products. Oh, so it's wow. like, yeah, it's like you get these like really cool opportunities. It speaks in volumes the city. about yourself though and like your work. You know. Thank you. And I think showing yourself you authentic self. I think being authentic to who you are. We don't have to change. Yeah, because you never Ourselves. switched it up. No. You kept your representation. You said, I'm a hijabi. Yeah, I'm this not not the perfect work. hijabi, but... Of course, you know, no one's perfect. We all struggle, yeah. but I think, uh, you know, knowing the, you know, like being in front of some other communities and unfortunately, without our knowledge, like no, without our ask or without knowing, we represent the entire Muslim population. Yeah. So how we behave, how we show up truly reflects on our community. And it's a bigger burden to carry. But I think it has some rewards. And I think when you're authentic, when you're just being yourself, 
Wallahi, you'll be amazed um, because some people will sh- surprise you because um, your merit will speak for it. And I think, you know, sometimes us looking at the Instagram reels and seeing people don't actually see the behind the scene work, right? The hours and hours of designing, hours and hours of cutting, sometimes crying because you have to do 50 million things at once Mm -hmm. and letting yourself down, overworked. And alhamdulillah, if you have the patient, Mm -hmm. and I think if you're consistent, Mm -hmm. it will pay off. Yeah, I honestly believe that. And you have to love what you do. That's true. Yeah. Just like you, like you love your community, work around the clock. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't see the amount of hours you're behind the desk working and putting events together. Yeah, that's what anytime asks me. How are you? I'm like fighting back tears. Yes, (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, don't ask me because like, yeah. It's a lot. And you know, um, and you know, surrounding, it's funny because when you, when you keep doing that, like, doing what you love mm-hmm. you tend to attract people that think and act like you and I'm just happy to have people like Adrian in my life that just pulls me in some cool cool projects mm-hmm. I've done a documentary I've done you he know told me the twins you guys got to do oh the my god I have project. to tell you yeah. about the twins yeah so when that opportunity came and I was like yo you know we're gonna put a hijabi there right mm-hmm. he's like He's like, Rami, you're the creative director, do you? So I had a hit. You see the hijabi that was on that video? That's Zahra. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Zahra grew up in the UAE. Wow. She doesn't know what a baseball is. (laughs) Yeah. So she's like, I'm like, play around with with baseball. Mm -hmm. She goes, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I'm like it's a baseball. Yeah. So like, yeah. So I, I, we were able to use a hijabi, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a way that is That's so surreal. That's we're amazing. part of this community. We mm-hmm. belong here. This is our home, whether you like it or not. Exactly. And so we have to embrace that. Mm-hmm. And I think showing up your authentic self, I think that video itself should should really show you. And we did um, a bunch of films locally and I get to to help with that and mm-hmm. have my name credited as part of a documentary. And mm-hmm. I think it's been great. Wallahi the you know possibilities are endless yeah. and my other mission is to put St. Paul on the map I think there's way too many Minneapolis folks <laughs> everywhere hey Lake you Street. put St. Paul on the map <laughs> listen <laughs> you put a Minneapolis with you on the map where's the <laughs> Twin Cities okay <laughs> why is that everybody say at I the know. end you're like hey we're from the Twin Cities no until you folks start saying Twin Cities I'm gonna throw St. Paul on your face <laughs> no I don't mind if it's for the better I'm with Absolutely. it no I love it no honestly if you thrive we thrive so absolutely I, I, please put st paul on the map they absolutely it. i we're it yeah yeah absolutely flex we got a black mayor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is true <laughs> and all women flex. city council please yes yeah, put some respect on our city i will i will <laughs> um okay can we talk a little bit about what you're wearing because oh like this is so cute thank you yeah so i'm uh before uh dahiliya time yeah. i'm a huge hat fan mm-hmm. so i've always wore hat and um when i transitioned into my hijab world i still kept it it's yeah just, it's either on top or it goes to the bottom and hijab on top it works and like now it's like the, it's fashion it is. we've done it before it's I like, know. <laughs> you look really awkward in the beginning yeah but now it's a it look but it uh, yeah it's a jacket um mm-hmm. that i'm wearing it's a basquiat uh jacket mm-hmm. and a basquiat hat just That's because cute. Um, he was an amazing creative yeah. that that died a long time ago. But I did my thesis on him, so yeah, yeah. I love it. Thank it's you, I appreciate cute. that. Yes. Oh, it's really sweet. Well, oh, okay, we talked about so many things. I learned yes. a lot. Like thank this interview you. was for me more than anybody. So <laughs> thank you so much for showing up. Well, thanks for having we me. We always love to wrap up with, and I know I'm. Um, you spoke a lot of gems and you gave a lot of advice, especially about going back to school or yeah. going to school and getting that knowledge. Absolutely. Um, but is there any advice that you have for anyone, especially a black or Muslim woman who, you know, is scared to start this journey? And because like you said, it's it's lonely. It's not yeah. um, common to, you know, have a field of mentors that you can go into. So what advice would you have for someone who you know, wants to go in the fashion world? 
I think that um, I've always say not knowing is not a crime. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know something, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, we all learned, right? And I think seeking knowledge, I cannot highlight um, enough of that. And I think reaching out to folks, if at any time you're interesting, wanting to learn, wallahi, my inbox is right open. It might just be me a few minute phone call if you have questions I'm willing to answer. I think reaching out to anyone really, mm -hmm. if you ask a I think pe most people a lot of time are willing to share what, what they know. Mm -hmm. So I would say like not knowing is not a crime and asking. Yeah. yeah. That's you, great. You'd be advice. amazed. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So you heard her. It's okay to ask for guidance or advice or help. Don't be shy. No. We're here for you. Yes. So thank you. So thank you so much oh, for thank coming. Thank you for having me. This was fun. And I always say I'm going to welcome you back. And I know, y'all, she's going to kill this world. So Inshallah. hopefully, like, she might be unreachable for me one day. But we're going to bring her back Inshallah. a few times. Yes. Inshallah. Some fun topics. Yes. yes and absolutely. always, um, again, follow her. And we'll link her socials. But follow her at Ramadan Designs right. on Instagram. And keep a lookout. And hey, if you need someone to bring your vision to life, or maybe even create a vision for you, you know who to reach out to. Absolutely. Yes. Thank yes. you so Thank much. Thank you for, for having me. Yes. Thanks. So see you guys next time. See ya.